Welcome back, everyone. You are enjoying another episode of Fast Facts Pharmacology Edition, brought to you by Tale of Two Hygienists in partnership with Elevate Oral Care. And now, please welcome your host, Tom Viola. Hi, I'm Tom Viola, a certified pharmacist, dental educator, and author. Stick with me, and I promise to make the next few minutes the best pharmacology learning experience you've ever had. Hi everybody, Tom Viola here with Pharmacology Declassified with another Fast Facts Pharmacology edition. Today we're going to be speaking about fluoride varnish. You know, it's easy to talk about cardiovascular disease and diabetes, but let's not lose focus on the fact that we need to talk about xerostomia, we need to talk about decay and caries and all of the things that are oral manifestations of these diseases. Uh, one of the products I like very much is the Fluoromax Varnish, uh, made by Elevate Oral Care. It's 2.5% sodium fluoride varnish. The best part about it, in my opinion, is the resin that's used. It's uh, more of a shellac. And um, we all know that uh, fluoride varnishes have been thoroughly studied uh, for safety and effectiveness. Um, and there's plenty of information, especially from the FDA, that said uh, fluoride varnish is indeed cleared for marketing uh, for the treatment of dentin hypersensitivity associated with the exposure of root surfaces or as a cavity varnish, but not for reducing caries. But there's an increasing body of evidence indicating that fluoride varnish is indeed effective in caries prevention. Use of fluoride varnish for caries prevention has been endorsed by the ADA, but it still remains an off-label use of the product because it's not cleared for marketing by the FDA for that purpose. High levels of fluoride, such as those attained with the use of topical gels or varnishes, produces a temporary layer of calcium fluoride. Uh, calcium fluoride like material really on the surface of the enamel and that fluoride is released when the pH drops right well obviously in response to acid production by the bacteria and it becomes available therefore now to remineralize the enamel once it's been affected by the acid produced by the bacterial metabolism so meta-analyses of 23 clinical trials most of which uh, favored a twice yearly application said that the use of fluoride varnish is fine in permanent and primary teeth uh, fluoride varnish applied every six months is effective in preventing caries in both the primary and permanent dentition of both children and adolescents. Now, how is the question? So unit doses of fluoride varnish are the only professional topical fluoride agent that are recommended for children younger than age six. But overall, varnishes have professional guidelines and recommendations for use by the AAPD and the ADA, as well as a dedicated insurance CDT code. So uh, plenty of studies out there to back that up. Remember, I like fluoride varnishes because of the application time, because of the inherent advantages. Number one, fluoride varnish applications take less time. Uh, therefore, they create less patient discomfort. And at the same time, they achieve greater patient acceptability than does the fluoride gel especially in preschool children. So what about age-related guidelines? Well, younger than six years, moderate risk patients should receive fluoride varnish applications at six month intervals. Again, fluoride varnish contains a smaller amount of fluoride compared to fluoride gels, and therefore reduces the risk of inadvertent ingestion, especially in children that young. High risk patients should receive fluoride varnish applications at three to six month intervals. What about older children, six to 18 years of age? Well, moderate risk individuals should receive fluoride varnish or gel applications at six month intervals. But again, higher risk patients should receive fluoride varnish or gel applications at six month intervals and three month intervals, depending on the level of caries that are presenting. Older than 18 years, well, moderate risk patients should receive, again, fluoride varnish or gel at six month intervals. And again, high risk individuals uh, at three to six month intervals. So the results show that fluoride varnishes are really recommended over fluoride preparations that are uh, available elsewhere, like foams, gels, rinses, uh, in most preventive uses. And varnishes are preventive therapy that can be delivered by doctors, uh, registered dental hygienists, and even dental assistants in some cases, and even in pediatrician offices. So I hope that helps clear up some of the uh, information you may have garnered over uh, the course of time when it comes to fluoride varnishes. I believe in them. I think they work very well. Again, uh, my favorite, uh, just because uh, I know the company very well, is Fluoromax Varnish, again, by Elevate Oral Care. So thank you so much for listening to this latest episode of Pharmacy uh, Pharmacology Facts, Fast Facts. And I will be on uh, duty for another two or three episodes coming up soon. 
because we have to finish our discussion of diabetes, both the uh, clinical guidelines for treatment as well as the medications used in its treatment. So until then, my friends, see you all soon. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to hear more from me, be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or visit my website at www.tombiola.com. Thank you for listening to another episode of Fast Facts Pharmacology Edition, brought to you in part by Elevate Oral Care, creators of the innovative and proven prevention-focused oral care products from Advantage Arrest Silver Diamine Fluoride to Floramax Sodium Fluoride Varnish. Learn more by visiting www.elevateoralcare.com and schedule your free CE staff meeting today. We'll see you next time for another Fast Facts.